10, verse 22. 9, 10, 22. Yes, good manage. Thank you. No, thank yous. Okay, good manage. <laughs> Stop being sentimental. Just do your just job. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Parivixya manam, parivixya manam bhagavan, vilokya vyaksyam anjasa, rajanam asapat kudo. No, I said chapter 10, not, not chapter 9. 9, 10, 22. Ramastam Ramastam Mahapurushara Purishyana Ramasta Ahapurushara Purishyana Kanta Samaksa Asata Priti Ritsvavate Dwakta Trapasyata Falam Adya Jigupsitasya Chayamikala Ivakartuma Langya Viraha Ramasta Ahapuru Sada Purishayana Ramasta Ahapuru Sada Purishayanam Kanta Samaksa Asata Navirit Savate Twakta Trapasyat Fala Adya Jigup Sitasyam Yachamikala eva cartoon along Yaviriaha. Translation Lord Ramachandra said to Ravana, You are the most abominable of the man eaters. Indeed, you are like their stool. You resemble a dog, for as a dog steals edibles from a kitchen in the absence of the household. In my absence, you kidnapped my wife, Sita Devi. Therefore, as Yamaraj punishes sinful men, I shall also punish you. You are most abominable, sinful, and shameless. Therefore, today, I, whose attempt never fails, shall punish you. <clears throat> no one can surpass the strength of the transcendence. Ravana was so sinful and shameless that he did not know what the result would be of kidnapping Mother Sita, the pleasure potency of Ramachandra. This is the disqualifications of the Rakshashas. Asatyam apritishtam te jagat ahur anishvaram. The Rakshashas are unaware that the Supreme Lord is the ruler of the creation. They think that everything has come about by chance or accident and that there is no ruler, king, or controller. Therefore, the Rakshasas act independently as they like, going even so far as to kidnap the goddess of fortune. This policy of Ravana is extremely dangerous for the materialists. Indeed, it brings ruin to the materialistic civilization. Nonetheless, because atheists are Rakshasas, they do, they dare to do things that are most abominable, and thus they are punished without fail. Religion consists of the orders of the Supreme Lord, and one who carries out these orders is religious. One who fails to carry out the Lord's order is irreligious, and he is to be punished. Next verse. <laughs> Evam shipam danusi sanditatam usa sarja. Evam shipam dunisi sandita ditam usa sarja. Banam saraja ihatam dudyayam vibeda. 
So Sri Vamanda Sukar Yapata Vimana Daheti Jaupati Jane Sukriti Varikaha. Translation After thus rebuking Ravana, Lord Ramachandra fixed an arrow to his bow, aimed at Ravana, and released the arrow which pierced Ravana's heart like a thunderbolt. Upon seeing this, Ravana's followers raised a tumultuous sound, crying, Alas, alas, what has happened? What has happened? As Ravana, vomiting blood from his ten mouths, fell from his airplane, just as a pious man falls to earth from the heavenly planets, when the results of his pious activities are exalted, exhausted. <laughs> In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Shina Purnya Martya Loka Vishanti. When the results of their pious activities are exhausted, those who have enjoyed the heavenly planets fall again to earth. The fruit of activities of this material world is such that whether one acts piously or impiously, one must remain within the material world according to different conditions. But neither pious nor impious actions can relieve one of Maya's clutches of repeated birth and death. Somehow or other, Ravana was raised to an exalted position as the king of the great kingdom with all material opulences. But because of his sinful act of kidnapping Mother Sita, all the results of his pious activities were destroyed. If one offends an exalted personality, especially the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one certainly becomes most abominable, bereft of the results of pious activities, and one must fall down like Ravana and other demons. It is therefore advised that one transcend both pious and impious activities and remain in the pure state of freedom from all designate, designations. Sarva, sarva pada, sarva padi, vinir muktam tat paratvena nirmalam. When one is fixed in devotional service, he is above the material platform. On the material platform, there are higher and lower positions, but one is above the material platform, he is always fixed in a spiritual position. Sagunan samatityai tan brahma buyaya kalpate. Ravana or those like him may be very powerful and opulent in this world, but theirs is not a secure position because after all, they are bound by the results of their karma, karmana, dive in the trainer. We should not forget that we are completely dependent on the laws of nature. Prakriti kriyamana ni gune karma sarva shyaham ahankara vimuratma kartaham itimanyate. Translation to bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself the doer of activities that are actually carried out by nature. One should not be proud of one's exalted position and act like Ravana, thinking one in oneself independent of the material laws of nature. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yenatas Mai Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Press Mai Bhutale Shumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Dev Hey Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Vastyatya De Sitarine Panchakopa Tarubischa Vipasindu Pevacha Paditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnare Vyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitana Bhuna Tamanda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So today is uh, the 
celebration of Vijay Dasami. Uh, it's also known as Vijay Mahotsava. It's the uh, celebration of when good conquered over evil. Or we might say when Ravana was killed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ravana representing evil, the Supreme Lord representing ultimate goodness. So this is a very important point, especially in this day we are living in. And you see, this particular pastime is interesting because Ramachandra playing like a human being in the material world apparently seems to indicate that when he was not there, his absence, his wife was kidnapped. Of course, the Supreme Lord is everything, knows everything, but for the sake of Leela, he acts like an ordinary person in some of the activities he performs. So he, he seems to know or he seems to be unaware that his wife got kidnapped and when he finds out, then he acts. Of course, he knows everything. But the point here is that Ravana represents that particular aspect where the living entity wants to defy the laws of material nature in order to find some sense gratification. So we see here, Sita represents, she is the pleasure potency of the Lord. She's inseparable from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he tried to separate the energy from the source of energy, or Ram Chandra, or you might say the Supreme Lord. So what did he get? Did he get pleasure potency? Did he get good fortune? Because Sita represent, is the goddess of fortune. But what he got was something different because the goddess of fortune bestows her, her mercy upon those who engage in devotional service and please the Supreme Personality of God. His activities were contrary to devotional service and was not meant to please anyone but him, his own lusty desires. And therefore he tried and he failed to kidnap the uh, Supreme Lord's wife. And then what is the result? He didn't get Lakshmi or Sita. He got her expansion known as Durga, or you might even say Kali, or you might even take it a step farther, Mahakali where she simply captures the demons and she has 16 arms, all with very deadly weapons, which she uses to destroy the demons. She is the agent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. She is the manifestation of the external energy of the Lord. Although Ravana thought he was getting pleasure what did he get? He got death instead. So the laws of material nature work in such a way as those who defy these laws, especially in relationship to the Supreme Lord's activities, receive a benefit or receive a reaction from that activity, which is contrary to their good fortune. The thinking they're going to get some power or they're going to get some position because Sita represents that. 
they simply act contrary to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And because of that, they are, have to suffer under the laws of material energy. And in this particular case, this was the Lord himself who met it out or distributed the mercy. Normally it happens when the demons make their plans and they can, they can go on with their plans for many thousands of years. And that's what they do because there's an eternal fight between the demigods and the demons. It's not something that just appears occasionally. It is going on con continuously. But those who engage in trying to usurp the property of the Lord without the permission of the Lord are subject to Yamaraj's punishment, which is a very strict rod. And Sita, she is um, good fortune for everyone, but those who go who defy the Lord and try to uh, usurp the property of the Lord for their own selfish interests are forced to suffer under the laws of material nature. The demons don't know this. They think that they can manipulate and change the material nature in order to work in a certain way. But in this particular case, and in, in general also, we, uh, we actually lose focus of what is beneficial. And that's a demoniac mentality. They cannot understand what is right. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains the nature of the demons. They don't know what to do, what not to do. Cleanliness, good behavior, and proper, proper uh, etiquette. All these things are not there. And this is a result of acting against the authority of the Lord in a gross way. This pastime is very interesting because we see a similar situation happening today. And Srila Prabhupada has given us pretty much a forecast that in Kali Yuga, and particularly in the present modern day materialist society, the demonic population is increasing as more and more people take to sinful life as a way to enjoy their senses. There are, authorized, there are authorized ways to enjoy the senses. That is called dharma or religious activities, which lead to artha and kama. And all these things, if they're followed according to the moral and religious principles as given by the direction of the dharma shastras, then everyone can live at least materially without so much suffering. <clears throat> but they don't. They are more in the modes of the lower modes that whatever they have, they're never satisfied. They only want more. And so this leads to competition, strife, em en enmity, and then en envy. And good people, apparently nice people, are put into difficulty 
because of this. But Srila Prabhupada's purport explains this policy is very dangerous. <laughs> so um, to be religious means to be under the protection of the Lord. To be irreligious means to be in, encased in the entanglement of material energy. So we see how the Lord deals with such. He kills the demons, and that way they get free from their demoniac nature. And at the same time, it relieves the burden upon the society. So the Lord comes as a mercy manifestation when he does to kill the demons. It's beneficial for everyone. So today is that day where we celebrate the victory of good over evil. And we also pray to the mercy of Lord Ramachandra that he will benedict us with his mercy by ridding the world of the demons. Of course, now the Lord has appeared in his form as Nishringadev, which gives protection to devotees and at the same time annihilates the demons. But in either manifestation or incarnation, whether it's the Sringadev or Ram Chandra, the mercy is the same. Is this material world is full of irreligious and sinful people. Therefore, only Lord Chaitanya's movement, focusing mainly on the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, can push back the tide of the demoniac uh, encroachment. It's increasing more and more. So, um, and Prabhupada said, don't worry, the devotees can take shelter of Krishna and the holy name and receive full protection by his mercy. And then the, then those, of, those who are actually religious will be free from all the effects of the atheistic demons we're always causing harm to the devotees. <clears throat> That's their business. They're interested. In, there's a nice verse in the, not one verse, two verses. Maybe you can turn to that verse to get a little insight of the mind, mindset of the demon. It's in the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. I believe it's verse number 13, we're going from Bhagavad Gita now. <laughs> Krishna describes how the demons think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is back in verse 13 through 15. <clears throat> the demoniac person thinks, so much wealth do I have today, and I will gain more according to my schemes. So much is mine now and I, it will increase in the future more and more. He is my enemy and I have killed him and my other enemies will also be killed. I'm the Lord of everything. I'm the enjoyer, I'm perfect, powerful, and happy. I'm the richest man surrounded by aristic relatives. There is none so powerful and happy as I am. I shall perform sacrifices. I shall give some charity and thus I shall rejoice. In this way, such persons are deluded by ignorance. So, so sometimes people say, well, you know, when devotees speak about what's going on behind the scenes in the material world with all the corruption and evil, they say, well, you know, that's just some conspiracy theory. Well, here, Krishna speaks the conspiracy theory right here. <laughs> He tells the mind of the demons and how they're always planning to gain more. And they have enemies. And sometimes they have many enemies and they're planning to uh, destroy their enemies and usurp more and more property, power, position for their own uh, sense gratification. It's like a, a disease that cannot be controlled. 
it just per proliferates itself. So this is the nature of the demoniac mentality. And Kali Yuga is full of demons. <laughs> Baba said they, they walk down the street with their suit and tie, but you should know they are no, they're just like the, the demons of yesteryear, except they're not as powerful as those demons <laughs> that, were, that had mystic powers years ago. But now that the demons don't have so much mystic power, some of them do actually, and they worship Kali Bhairava. They worship Lord Shiva and his fierce manifestation in order to get some power and some position and kill their so-called des designated enemies. <clears throat> so this goes on in the world <clears throat> and it's going on today. <laughs> it's going on today because <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada has predicted it. The society will become so full of demons that after so, so much, people will not be able to live in this world and they will run to the forest in order to find some refuge. The demons will continue to improve, create their propaganda in order to get more and more power. So these lower modes of passion and ignorance are there. And so devotees should take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Ram Chandra. He is the manifestation of supreme uh, righteousness, uh, morality, civility, dharma in all its features. He is perfect as a husband, perfect as a friend, perfect as a warrior, perfect as um, one who is always truthful in every situation. <clears throat> and he's also extremely compassionate to those who surrender unto him. So today is the, uh, and um, if you can see it, can you, um, can you give me the position of showing photos from my uh, from my computer? Can we do that? Sure, Guru Maharaj. Let me see. I think. What do uh, I have to do? Screen screen share? Is that it? We have to go to screen share. Yes, it, it's uh, the option has been uh, disabled, Guru Maharaj. So I'm just checking. Let me just quickly uh, see. And just give a few minutes, Guru Maharaj. I need to uh, change the settings in the browser because um, the, that um, setting is disabled on the Zoom to allow okay. participants to share. Just give me one minute, Guru Maharaj. Problem. I'll show you some interesting photos. Which illustrates today's particular festival. Are we coming close here? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm just checking. I think it looks like everything has been... Oh, so, uh, Guru Maharaj, this has been logged by the admin. I'm not sure. I think uh, Lavanya Mataji or someone is the admin. I won't be able to do it because I'm not the admin on Zoom. Well, we can't see. <laughs> well, Sorry. let's see who's, who's on Zoom, who knows how to do it. Is anyone here? Diptesh? You know how to do it? So I can share my screen. Maybe it's, uh, let me just share. I, I'll show you what is happening.
So screen sharing, um, see this is Guru Maharaj, this has been locked by the admin, this is disabled. So I'm not able to do it. Mm. It says yeah. host, who can share host only, it says. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, so if you if you are co-host, uh, you can share your screen. Uh, so Satya Bhama Mataji, yeah. you can make Guru Maharaj co-host, then it's, it's uh, Maybe, possible. Yeah. Maybe try it now, Guru Maharaj, if possible. I can bring up the photos and see if you can see them. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. uh, you have to share the Guru Maharaj. You have to uh, click on this share button. Uh, there's okay. an up arrow, green up arrow. Okay, there you go. All right. Now, if I can you see that? Yes, now I, we can see yes. Guru Maharaj. Yes, we can see. Yeah. yeah. So this is Sita with Ravana. And you can see Ravana there with 10 heads. This is a little theater that was done with the devotees in Bhaktivedanta Manor. We'll take you to the next photo. Here's the devotees watching. This is in Bhaktivedanta Manor in the year 2015. We'll go to the next photo. So Guru Maharaj, we can see only first photo. We cannot see the others one. So we might have to press the arrow key on the same picture. I have to push the arrow key? Yes, to go on the left-hand side or right-hand side, whichever way the pictures are, because we can see one picture with, with 10 heads, Ravan with the 10 heads. That's all? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Sharing screen, huh? Okay, here you go. Can you see that one? Yes, we can see now. It's a okay. big crowd, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Let's see. Go back to share screen. Huh? There's this one. Looks like the, the council of the... Uh, of, uh, the devotees there. Uh, let's go to the next photo. See if you can see the next one. Can you see that one? No, Guru Maharaj, we can see the crowd at the moment, the picture with, with lots of crowd. Okay, new share. How about this one now? Yes, we can see the Ravan burning. And, yeah. There he goes. He's finished. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, okay, here we got, let's see here, another share screen. We got Hanuman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, another one. Let's see, after Hanuman, who do we have here? Okay. Okay, share screen. We got Sita and her associates. You can see? Yes, yes, Kamalaj, we can see Sita. Okay, Sita Devi. And next one is, let's see. Here you go. This one is. There he is. This is a nighttime shot of Anam, no, Ravana. He's losing his cool here. Can you see that? Yes, yes, Ravana is Ravana burning, yeah. 
Let's see, the last one on 2015, Dasera, and, and then we have a fight here between Hanuman and someone. <laughs> okay. Modern day fight, you can see all the electrical lines in the back. All right, so let's go to the next series of photos. It gets more exciting now. Let me see. No, we're going to the wrong thing here. Coming up to Shadow. Okay, let's get, have to get the share screen again. Okay, here's one where you can see this one. Um, yes, yes, we can see. Yeah, that's another different year. Or every year the devotees make this huge 15 foot or more five or six meter high monster. Okay. And then we'll do this one here. Okay, share screen for this one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yes, we can see. Let's see, where's the next one? This one looks proper scared, Ravan Guru Maharaj. Look, his, his mouth is open, his eyes are wide. Mm. This one you'll like. This one will give you really, this one's really exciting. There he is. He's on his way out. <laughs> what, the, what the devotees do is they shoot a flaming arrow. And inside there, there's all straw. And when it catches, it just burns. Sometimes we put firecrackers. And here's another image of Ravana, which you might find very interesting. See that one? Yes, good one. <laughs> Those of you who like purple. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Now we get some And we see after the battle and Vibhishan, he comes and he surrenders to Ravana. He surrenders to Rama. I mean, here's a nice little picture. That's Vibhishan and some of his associates coming to surrender to Ravana, to Ram. See that? Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. Okay. So this is a very glorious day for the devotees. And every year, I think Bhaktivedanta Manor does it. I don't know if they're going to do it this year. You can check and see if you're there in London. You can run to the manor and watch the Watch the Leela happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the devotees become very happy when demons are killed.
Okay, we're back. Hetal Mataji is saying that I think they're doing it this year as well. Good, good, good. Anyway, I remember we used to do it in, uh, in, the, in the local streets in Columbus, Ohio temple, behind the temple. We would set this monster on fire and every year the neighbors would call the fire department. <laughs> 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 and when the fire department would come we would say well we're just performing our religious ceremony <laughs> like that so there are so many little ravanas running around the world today causing people trouble if we seriously take shelter of the supreme personality Godhead will be free from all the effects of this, this Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga represents the age of demons. Okay, so I'll conclude here. So read about the pastime. I pinpointed a few verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam from the 10th chapter. There's a series of verses that lead up to Ravana being killed. Any comments or questions? Yeah, uh, thank you Guru Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please uh, unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise you can type in the chat box and I'll read it for you. Thank you. Sukhava. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your Lord. Thank you so much for the class. It was really nice. Um, Guru Maharaj, can I ask you? I always had this question in my mind from the very beginning when I went, whenever I listened to Ramayan. The Ram being, the, like Ram knew everything where Sita, Sita Mataji were. So why why were that long gap to go and kill Ravan? Why why didn't Ram took actions quickly and then went there to relieve Sita Mata? Yeah, it's, that's the Lord's Leela. He's also teaching us so many things. How one laments when they get separated from their wife. He was lamenting the loss of his wife, how an ordinary man will act in this situation. He's also teaching us um, that uh, he's also showing what we should avoid. Like the demons are never happy with whatever they have, so they always want more. The Lord is all powerful and he's all knowing. But in his leelas, he performs these activities to teach various things and to enjoy his own transcendental pastime. He was showing the glory of Sita that she remained chaste and faithful despite being put into a situation where she would have been killed if she didn't submit to Ravana. Mm -hmm. She maintained her chastity and her purity. She says that Sita is actually the guru of this particular Leela because we learn so much from her, her ideal character as a wife, as a, uh, yeah, as a wife. She's teaching the posi position of an ideal wife. And how glorious it was. And how Hanuman, Hanuman's glory is also brought out by uh, his association with her 
when he when had to find her, when he had tried to encourage her to come, when he saved her after she was brought back, and then she had to go through another trial to prove her chastity. Mm. Um, there's so much to learn from these pastimes. We can't imitate the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but we can take the principles that they teach. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> You're right, Guru Maharaj. There's so much to learn there. Yeah, like like it says that uh, Ram could produce you know thousands of sitas, but in this particular leela, he's teaching uh, what is called ekaputni, one wife, as well with Krishna, he's in a different mood. Brahm is righteous, he's moral, he's religious, he's ideal, and both husband, father, and king. So uh, when you study the Ramayan, you'll find that there's so many moral and religious lessons that can be learned. In fact, mm -hmm. it is full, and there's so many. So he's teaching from the position of an ordinary person. But yet he's still performing his Leela. What is his Leela? Is to rid the world of demoniac forces. So this is a factual historical event. It's not just some allegory or some story. So in the, in the material world, Vishnu Bhakta and Asura they are side by side. The demons and the devotees are side by side. And in this age, the killing of the demons is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Where in previous age, Krishna killed the demons and Ram killed the demons by destroying their bodies. You see how much emphasis is, is on, there's on two things, uh, uplifting the devotees and ridding the world of evil. So the Lord is enthusiastic to rid mm -hmm. the world of evil when, the, uh, when evil becomes so prominent in the world that the devotees cannot function or perform their devotional life. Then the Lord will come. True. He's coming. Thank this you, age. God. Yeah, he's already come in this age as the holy name. We just chant Hare Krishna. Yes, you're right. Thank you so much for reminding that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. The demons are everywhere. It's true. So true. Yeah, they hide behind different agencies but they're all they're everywhere yeah. in our mind also they are there Guru Maharaj. well that's the worst place yeah well the mind is a thing in itself don't trust the mind just bring in krishna's holy name that's all chant Hare krishna mm. But really chant, chant from the heart, chant with enthusiasm, chant with complete determination. Yep. Krishna allows these things to happen in order for the devotees to go deeper into their, into their uh, Krishna consciousness. And at the same time, He's punishing the non-devotees for their sinful activities by allowing the demons to harass the, uh, the general population. When people come, become mm -hmm. sinful, the demons harass people more and more, and they're getting the reactions of their sinful activities. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's orchestrated by material nature, but Krishna allows it to happen because people are sinful. 
when people are pious, mm -hmm. then the demons can't do anything. Mm -hmm. People are sinful, so they. But devotees don't have anything to worry about. They simply have to take shelter. But taking mm -hmm. shelter is not always so uh, easy. Prabhupada gives the example of Prahlad Maharaj, what he had to go through. Also, Devaki, what she had to go through. And they were both harassed by Kamsa and by her, mm -hmm. Kashi Poo. Well, demons, yeah. are, will har demons will harass. The first, they'll try to take all your money, and if they can't get it, then they'll find ways to get it. Mm -hmm. And then they just make you more and more restrictive by more and more laws, rules. So Prabhupada said the governments are just dacoits and chiefs and demons and rogues. That's all they are, really. Mm -hmm. There's a few good people in there, but they can't do anything because everybody's they're all this is the this is kali yuga the demons are everywhere the good people are who have power in the world are pretty much handcuffed because they can't do much because they're surrounded by uh, this influence that's everywhere mm. Well, that's why Prabhupada said, get these farm communities together, grow your own food, uh, make your own cloth, learn medicine, administer your own herbal remedies, build your own homes, become away from the demoniac society and become self-sufficient within the society, create a society within the society. That was Prabhupada, that is Prabhupada's plan. As he knew, as Kali Yuga progresses, the demons will only increase more and more and more. They look like nice guys. You they do. They do. I know. When they, when they when they talk, you can see what they're at. You know, they're they promise no more. We will reduce taxes. We will reduce all the, you know, all the, we will give protection to the people. But where's the, they're always raising the taxes. <laughs> they're always- Every year. <laughs> every just, year. Every minute. Every <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much Devotee. for bringing out the demoniac atmosphere. One has to be aware of that. That way we can take proper precautions. Diptesh Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, thank you for uh, wonderful narrations of uh, the chapters from Bhagavatam related to Lord Ramachandra. I just wanted to, Maharaj, make a comment um, where it said, Prabhupada says in the purports, and you also emphasize where the demonic quality is that they don't consult. They act whimsically. Um, and I think I'm just referring to my individual scenario in the sense that we are, I feel so fortunate that we have, uh, or at least I have, uh, we all have association of uh, senior devotees of yourself, Maharaj, that we can approach and, and, and discuss matters so that we can take the right decisions, even though sometimes we don't like to hear what what's gonna come in. So So, we are protected by Guru, Sadhu, and Shastras and Prabhupada's books, and we are very fortunate for that. So I, I, I want to thank you uh, yeah. for that, Maharaj. But this is a very important point because, you know, many times we want to act independently outside of our, when Prabhupada said, 
many times that you are, you know, whims of your mind. If you want to satisfy the whims of your mind, then that's not the right thing to do. So we are fortunate to have the shelter of senior devotees and Vaishnavas whom we can approach for guidance. Yes, Sadhu Sangha. That's, our, that's where the power is. When everyone is working together to serve Krishna. Everyone's working together to serve Krishna. We will automatically serve each other in trying to serve Krishna. So yeah. I... uh, this morning I gave a class to the devotees in uh, in uh, New York. I was and, there, Mar. And did you uh, get the contact I was referring to? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, so see if you can help those devotees get some books. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. I, I, I was going to I was going to interject and put some comments, but Radha Bhakti Mataji already provided uh, the contact details. So I will uh, reach out to her as well to make sure. Okay. Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. Thank you. In my, I should tell you, since I've been traveling in the U.S. for five weeks, we've sold over sixty books. Jai. And so, you know, all we have to do is put it out there and people want Yes. It. I'm down to three books left. <laughs> I also don't have books here, Maharaj. So we're trying, we should try to get it from uh, Mayapur, some stock. Well, thing. between you and, uh, and uh, you know, Dira Prashant, See if you can work on getting those books over. There are thousands of books that are sitting in Mayapur. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. yeah. Come up with a scheme. Okay. Thank you, Dutesh Prabhu. And devotees, if there are any other questions, um, See. Looks like that's it for today. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, so we can close the call for today, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Today is a wonderful day. Read more about this pastime and if you're living in London, see if you can go to the festival. Yes, I think London, they're celebrating it tomorrow. Okay. So we'll see tomorrow, nice. yeah. We'll plan. Good, good, good. Okay. They might be celebrating it in other places around the world. Also. Yes, in India, they celebrate it big, like uh, every city, they burn in every colony, they burn the Ravan. Is small or big, different sizes now. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of Robiners out there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Sitaram Lakshman Hanuman Ki Jai. Siva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Thank you very much, Gurudev. Hare Krishna. Swaha. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Nitai Natraj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Sudha. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for the class. Hare Krishna. Uh, Krishna, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Philip. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare
She's good, Kumar. She's um, just worried, hoping you're doing well. Thinking I'm fine, yeah. Is she happy? Yes, she's happy. Thank you, Kumar. She's getting used to her new name after 75 years. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Shamarani. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Srimati. Every minute we're getting closer to Dallas. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> How did your class go? It was good, Guru Maharaj. I just yeah. uh, um, got your blessings and uh, it went well, Guru Maharaj. Good. I'm sure if you remember Prabhupada, it was, it was just like a piece of cake. So easy. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada gave nice purport uh, in the Krishna book. Uh, so it's easy to prepare and uh, remember the points, Guru Maharaj. Uh -huh. Good, nice. <laughs> I'm happy you did that. There's nothing more than, that really satisfies me when I see the devotees coming forward and speaking classes for preaching Krishna consciousness. This is the most satisfying. Thank you for engaging me, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mataji, 